Hi everyone, um, my name is Mickey. Uh, this is also my uh, IRC handle and my pose ID. Um, a little bit about myself, I've been uh, recently mostly working on the open source on uh, Meta CPAN and a few years back I worked a little bit uh, on Dancer as well, Dancer 2 to be more uh, precise and uh, this is kind of where the idea for this talk came from. Uh, I don't know if I want to start the whole uh, story here because it's a bit long but uh, it has to do with that. Um, so. Um, for a living, I write bugs at booking.com, and uh, as you may know, we're always looking for talent, so um, if you're interested, then uh, you know what to do. So um, what is today's talk will be about? I'm going to go uh, ahead and show you a lot of code of this project that I did uh, a while ago uh, as a as preparation for another talk, but then it, it grew because uh, there were some challenges there that I wanted to, um, things that I wanted to fix, features that I wanted to add, and slowly I started adding more and more stuff to it. Uh, and suddenly I had this like little um, framework that actually worked. Uh, it was a proof of concept, of course, and it, it stays within that. Um, we're, we're not going to release it or, or do anything with it because, uh, yeah, do we really need another framework? The answer is absolutely not. This is not what this is about. I'm not. Uh, the, the whole idea here is just for, um, for proving a point for uh, maybe. Uh, uh, teaching a little bit, but um, I wouldn't even look at my code as something that I want to teach people. Uh, most of you are programmers, probably better than I do, so you're not going to be seeing good code today. You're going to see code. Uh, it kind of works uh, for the examples, but, but that is, that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, it's a lot of fun. So the whole thing was building something from scratch. And if you know, if, if you ever build something from scratch, you know the level of satisfaction that you get from seeing something that you started from nothing and then it, it, it's working and, and or other people are using it. In this case, it's working. Uh, it's, really, it's really nice. I've been doing it uh, ever since I started programming. When I, back when I was uh, 11 years old, I was building things from scratch and I always enjoy them the most. Uh, so in this case, I just thought, you know what, this, this was a nice project. I want to share it with people, and I hope you will enjoy it as well. Um, so we're going to see it growing from the start and until it becomes uh, something that, that works. And the ultimate goal would be to show you something that uh, a friend of mine uh, designed for me, this uh, website. I'm going to go ahead and run the server. It's just a development server. and. So a big thank you to a friend of mine uh, from Booking is a great designer, Ridwan Sanusi. He, he designed this website uh, for the purpose of this talk. It's a simple page. It's, it doesn't do uh, uh, a lot, but show you a few images and, and, and have some links. Uh, if I click on one of the links, then you will see uh, static content uh, about this uh, specific uh, plant. But there are th some things that happen here. And, and, and I want to quickly show you what's going on here. So this is the web application that runs this website. So first, you can see that I'm using uh, a different framework. But the syntax um, is quite denser-like. It is. Um, it has the same, not all of it, but some of the DSL that Dancer provides as well. Uh, you can see that you can define uh, routes uh, the same way. Uh, use templates. In this case, it will support the xlate uh, template uh, as an engine. Uh, when I define the name of the template, it will look for uh, a, a matching file with a .html extension in the public directory. 
uh, I can pass information to this template. In fact, the page that you just saw is, is a templated, um, that's the whole thing, right? It's, it's a colon separated, it's uh, xlate uh, syntax, uh, going over some structure and using some uh, elements from, from the data like file, image, and, and name. The, the file is something like this. It's, it's not a lot, but if you see, we, ho we also have one other route handler, which does uh, name matching on, on, a, on a route and uses that, this to, uh, to be passed to the template as a name of a file. So this is capturing, in this case, like the chrysanthemum.html. Um, of course, if you're using Dancer, you know about auto pages, which will do the same thing. But in this case, I was first thinking that I'm going to pass information to this template. So I, I, I wanted to keep it like this. And I also didn't implement the auto pages. So uh, this was a bit of a, a nice tricky thing. This is actually implementing this was the reason uh, this uh, project actually continued after the first talk. And to get to this point where this small amount of HTML, templated HTML, and a very tiny web application would actually work, we need a framework that, that can actually do that. Um, if you know anything about frameworks, they, they tend to be uh, very big, very heavy. They do a lot of things. They have a lot of features. There's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of man hours put in them for security, for testing, and for features. This is not the case. This is a very tiny, and as you will see, this whole framework is less than 150 lines of code, but still, it will do a lot of things that are really nice. Um, so let's start building it. We'll start at a very simple uh, scratch pad, but for us, scratch would not be an empty file. Uh, I am going to build on top of plaque. I did not uh, uh, go that crazy to also implement uh, uh, my own uh, uh, implementation for the PSGI protocol. I might do that for the next talk if I ever give it again, but for, for this time, I, I settled for just using plaque as is. So the first example that we're going to see and hope is the font size big enough for you guys to read? All right, I'll take it as a yes. Um, I'm going to run this on a different port. And everything that I'm going to do now will just be running live, and I will uh, test the code live. So in, th in this first example, all I'm doing is building a very simple uh, PSGI application. This is still just a, a web application. It uses um, Plaque Component as its parent. The reason is Plaque Component gives you um, it gives you a framework for for building an application that would uh, you can use to to run to build the application itself by calling the two apps. So um, in our sorry. Um, in our PSGI script that runs this, uh, I, I call to app and get the application back, and this is what's being passed to Plaque up in order to run the server. Um, so this comes from f for free when you use Plaque component. You don't need to implement it. The only thing that you do need to implement is one method called call, which will be run for every request coming into the server, and it will pass the environment, which is the request itself, all it needs to do is return a valid PSGI uh, response. In this case, I'm just going to return some 200 status, uh, a header, and some content that also contains something from the request, just to see it end to end. Uh, to test this, we can simply call curl on the port. We can see that we got the, 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 va the value in the content that, that we set. Uh, of course, if I do it in a verbose mode, you can see a little bit more. We can see the header that we set and, and uh, the re response, the status that we got. To make this a bit more readable, hopefully, I wrapped curl 
with a small Perl script to give some color, I hope you can read this. Uh, it's just to make it a bit clearer on what we sent and what we're getting just for the purpose of this uh, talk. So this was our first example. Very basic, still doing nothing. So we start building on this. First thing we do is we don't want to write PSGI uh, code uh, or PSGI syntax, so we'll use objects uh, with the help of plaque request and plaque responses objects as a, as a model that we can create objects from. When, in our call, we will create a, a request from the environment that, that we got, and we will create a response object which we will fill with uh, content. In this case, I also serialized the, uh, the content with JSON and changed the header that we sent to the content type. Uh, it can do, uh, it doesn't have to be JSON, but it is. And uh, the final call is to finalize, which will basically transform the response object into a PSGI re response. And this is what we're going to get back. So if I run the same call as before, now you see the content type is application JSON, and we get a serialized JSON as output. So our application is improving. Next step would be to differentiate between different HTTP methods. So we want to have different handling for different requests. Uh, a request has a path and a method. So we start with dealing with the method. Uh, so I left the same handling when the request method is a get and added different handling for other requests. So if I set send the same request as before, I will get the exact same uh, output, but if I send a post request, the only thing that will happen is the 201 uh, status that will be set, and as you can see, this is exactly what happens. If I set an anything else, whether it's a valid or invalid uh, HTTP method, I will just get a not allowed. And it's not because it's not allowed, just because I set it here. I could have set it to anything. Whatever is here would have been uh, Respond, uh, would be in the response. So, so far, we differentiate by method. Um, next step would be to differentiate by path. So, here again, I didn't touch the get, I only uh, split the path so I can use it. And again, with the example of the postcode, I do, I do checks on what is the path, uh, Again, this is not a pretty code, and I do not recommend uh, uh, ever using it, but if I send a request as before for a post request, I will get a 401. The 401 is actually because of this condition not being met, because we are checking whether the path starts with a slash API. So I'll start that. Now I get it, I'm getting a 400, which is because there is no second part of the path, so I'll add a second path. And now I'm still getting a, f a bad request, and this is because, oh, I have an empty body. It's expecting the body of the request to be a valid JSON uh, and to have some keys, so let's add a valid JSON. This needs to be escaped. Um, and hurrah, we got the 201, so everything worked. Um, so what do we have now? We have an application. The application uh, works per path, per method. We can handle different paths uh, being uh, requested with different methods differently. We can basically implement uh, a fully uh, featured uh, CRUD uh, application here, which is pretty much what I did, and this is where this whole thing started for me. I, I just needed to write an application with no uh, framework. There was a business case for it, though normally I would not recommend doing that. But it was a very simple case and very specific use case. And, and, and that's pretty much covering wh what, we, what we did back then. But now, I'm at five. Um, now, I wanted to keep going and make this thing look a bit more like a framework. So 
it will we'll get there, still small steps. Uh, first thing was to, to get the logic of the path handling out of the call method. So I created this route registry, which holds uh, route handlers, uh, basically code refs that will be called per route. Uh, they go by method and path. So if we have a matching method and path for this, um, for this uh, request, we will execute uh, a method, we'll pass the request and response to it, and we'll get back the content and set it back into the response. Uh, I don't have to do it because the, the response object is being passed, but the reason I'm doing it is because I, as you remember, I want to do something that's similar to Dancer, and this is the way Dancer work. When, when the handler gives back the response, this is what's being set into the, into the response content. So I, I, I kept the same style, and I'm pulling the content out. Uh, the registry itself, it's a, simple, uh, it's a simple global hash. It's not, nothing special there. Uh, a method that, that will just take a method, a route, and a handler, and will fill this hash. And I'm using uh, this hook that exists in Plaque Component. If you, um, if you implement this method, the subroutine called prepare app, it will be called once during the two app execution. And uh, in this case, it's a perfect place for us to put the route adding uh, code. So we set those routes once into the registry and when the call comes in, it will check the registry. If the, if the route is defined, it will, it will run. Just to make sure that this works, um, let's do... Not found, of course, because I did not define a slash. It's a slash hello. So if I call a get request to slash hello, I will get this method to actually this subroutine to run, and uh, we will get the uh, the response. Uh, you can see that this is becoming somewhat more familiar. The 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 syntax here gets closer and closer to the syntax of Dancer. Next step, with the help of some syntactic sugar uh, for the get uh, and post request, this is not the important thing here, uh, I wanted to implement this. I wanted to be able to use a named capture in the route and use it within the execution of my route handler. Um, so of course I have to pass the captures in so I can uh, access the data. But as you can see, I can pull from this uh, hash ref by the same key that I set in the route, the value that was passed in. So now, first see that it works. If I say this is slash, uh, slash hello slash whatever name, let's say dancer, this thing will go all the way from the route, be picked into the captures, and then I can actually use it within the handler. It's pretty cool. It, it, it took some, uh, yeah, some thinking about how to do that. Uh, it's not as trivial as doing uh, exact matching. So the way I did it was um, when I set when I when I call add route, it will check whether the route contains a colon. If it does, it will replace the it will create a string, uh, uh, a regex, from the route with a substitution of that colon and whatever came after it with the syntax of uh, kept, named captured uh, regular expression, and we'd store that in, uh, in another global uh, hash that's called route QR. There is another one that's called sorted routes. The reason I added this one at the end of the route se setting um, I'm, creating, um, I'm creating a sorted list for every method of the routes that it has, and this is a descending, uh, sorted descending by length. The reason I added it was because when you, have, uh, when you don't have exact matches and you don't know what the length of your route is, you probably want to capture the longest one. 
This was a nice idea, but it is buggy. Um, I noticed the bug, uh, I think, two days ago because the length that is being checked is the length of the string that we defined here, which includes the name of the key. So it's, the, it's not necessarily a longer route if just the name of the key is longer. So you can probably uh, make it fail, but um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. The idea was nice. Uh, how does it work in, in, during the call? We're just be, uh, checking, uh, like before, we're, we're checking if we have an exact match. If we have, we, we run this one. If we don't have an exact match, we will check whether this route has a QR assigned to it uh, in, the, in the other uh, global hash. And if it does, we will execute uh, the regular expression. And if we have, uh, well, yeah, if we have a match, then the uh, kept named captures hash will be passed by reference also. And this is what you've seen in the route handler as the uh, hash ref dollar captures, which I referenced and took the value from. So this works. This works and it's really nice. Next example would be number seven. And if I remember correctly, this is the first one where I actually took the route handling outside of this file. So far we had one file that defines everything, and, but we don't want that, right? We want a framework. So a framework needs to be working with, with a lot of different files that define applications. In this case, I added another file called web app. Uh, and here you can see that it already starts to look like, and here also the app itself that we're running is no longer uh, using the dancer uh, from scratch, but now it is our app. And to make that work, I had to do a lot of things that I'm going to go over right now. So first, web app itself is a bit more dancer-like syntax, as you can see. Uh, it uses our uh, framework module, and it supports uh, all sorts of uh, keywords, just like Dancer, to define the routes. Now, to make that work, I had to do a bit of Dancer-like trickery. And being familiar with Dancer Core, I stole some ideas from there, not one-to-one, -one, but uh, it's, it's kind of like the same concept. So, what happens is when we use our framework module, it will go ahead and parse this file. The first thing that it will, one of the first things that it will do, it will create a singleton object of that file, put all the global data that we had in those hashes inside this singleton, change all the code that we have that was referencing those globals to to basically add stuff into that singleton, into its uh, uh, structures. And as a bonus, inject some methods into the namespace of the caller, which is our web app. So what happens is, once that file was parsed and those methods were added to our namespace, then when we basically run this subroutine, because that's what it is. It's defined in our namespace, but what it does, it passes those values basically to the add route call, which in turn would inject this data into our singleton. So our singleton is the one thing that gets uh, inflated with all this data. All the routes are registered there, um, and eventually, it will hold everything that our application needs in order to run. And the final call, which is done from the PSGI uh, uh, file, so what BlackUp is running, it's calling to app on our web application module, which in turn will call to app on the singleton object. So we will get that application registered and run by the server. Let's just make sure that this still works. 
It is still working. But we made a very uh, big uh, jump here. We, we now have our web application separated and, and our code uh, of the Dancer from Scratch module is now our framework to be used. But still, there are some ugly things here, like we're still passing uh, the request and response or, and captures. Um, so I wanted to make that a bit cleaner as well. So we wanna, we wanna see the application more like this, right? We wanna, we wanna remove all the unnecessary stuff from it. To do that, I added more things into the DSL. So more methods that do more, more stuff, more features, dancer-like uh, accessors to the uh, accessors to the parameters like body route, uh, access to the re request and response uh, captures is now its own key. So I don't need to um, to pass it. I can just access it directly. It will just uh, transfer the, the contents of the captures uh, hash that is now in the singleton itself. So I'm, I'm assigning it into the singleton when I'm matching something. So in the call, we expect to see it here. App captures gets the, gets the hash ref uh, when we have a match which I just realized is another bug because it's not being cleaned. So if there is a, something being matched there, then uh, for the next call, it will still be there. It needs to be fixed. Um, so eventually we have a nice, clean, dancer-like application that would, that would work. It still works, right? Let's make sure that it still works. It still works. Nice. I wanted to add hooks because why not? Um, so before and after hooks that will not do much but just print something here. Um, and of course, had to support it from DSL. It will call a method called add hook, which will just register the same way we did with route. It will just register a hook in a global, uh, in a global hash, which is inside our singleton. Uh, now I had to remove the part that calls the, the basically calls the, the, the handler into, uh, into a, its own sub, which will first run the before hook, then run the, the handler, and then run the after hook. Uh, I can choose what kind of data I want to pass to those hooks. Uh, in this case, I just pass the return value to the after hook could have basically run anything there because also um, it has the same access uh, as any DSL, uh, uh, like anything that uh, a normal handler has, it can just access through the DSL. So the only thing that was missing was the return value. Uh, I added this as well. Now, if we run something, we will see that it still works, but also the before and after hooks were called uh, around the call of the handler. And the last thing that was missing to make this whole thing uh, nice was actually to make the thing that you've seen in the beginning work. So be able to run templates and have a nice rendered page being served. Um, so I added an instance of a template engine to the, to the singleton, to the app. Uh, in this case, just chose text xlate, could be anything else. Um, could add, well, maybe in the future, could add configuration that can control this, like in Dancer. Um, don't really want to go there, but uh, can do that. Also, it's added support for before template and after template hooks. Uh, now, when we render uh, something, if I go and show you the uh, implementation, we, we just call render template method, which will, um, first it will take the, f the name of the first value, assume that it's an HTML file under the public directory, and run the before template, run the after template after we render it, and in the middle, between, in between them, it will run the template engine's render call uh, on the arguments that it got, so this is why now this is not the file anymore, because at this point I've also changed the uh, PSGI script to run 
the other uh, application that you've seen before. So let's switch to that. Now our, our application can look exactly like it did before, a very simple thing that supports the templating, passing information, and everything uh, in between works with this um, framework that is, yeah, roughly 150 lines of code. Uh, also added a bunch of, uh, of checks. When I'm adding a hook or adding a route, I added a bunch of checks because now that it's like a framework and, and, and the definitions of those routes are not within the same file and, but in, in some other file, then we want to be a bit more strict on what we accept as a route handler, right? We, we want to make sure that if we got a, a subroutine, it's actually a code ref or things like that. And now if I go and run this from the other port that we are currently running, you will see that we actually got the same thing. So the whole thing works uh, end to end. And this was my last code example. So I had a lot of fun. And <laughs> did it? Did we create a precedence here? No. Um, that was my exam, my uh, my talk. So, if anyone has any questions, Sawyer. Thank you. Yes. So it sounds like this was sort of a toy project. Absolutely. Yeah. What framework do you use for your own Um So Sawyer is in the room. I will say this, uh, uh, my preference would be Dancer too. Um, working on uh, Meta CPEN, I am mostly using Catalyst because it's already uh, written in Catalyst. But I don't really, I'm not advocating for, the only thing that I wanna say is that this is a, like you said, this is a toy project. I wouldn't use it in production. Absolutely not. Uh, pick, a, pick an established framework. If you're using, use Catalyst, use Dancer, use Mojo. They're all very mature, well-tested, robust, and, and secured projects. I know they're heavy. The, the, the reason I got to this in the first place was because I needed to remove Dancer from, from being a dependency for a project because it was ridiculously uh, heavy. Uh, for something that didn't really need all the features that da Dancer provides. It wasn't using any of the engines like logging, templating. It was just doing route, basic route handling, so, so I didn't need it. And so I, I, I wrote this simple application, but then, as I said before, I had this talk about it and, and, and I just kept playing with it until it became something that's working. Any other questions? All right, so I thank you very much for your time. Thanks for listening.